Hello everyone. Um, today I'm going to show you my web app, Bullet, that I've been working on for the last few months. Uh, let's see what it looks like. It's called Bullet. If I, if I go to localhost, 8888. And here it is. Here's Bullet. Uh, Bullet is an online marketplace uh, similar to, let's say, Craigslist or in Swedish, Blocket. It's, um, it's a live updating application that um, synchronizes everything across all connected clients. So if I, right now there are no ads displayed, so my search query is empty. But if I add a new window, let's see what happens. I'm going to go... If I go to login, and I decide to log in with my Facebook account, it uh, promptly logs me in. And now I'm, now I'm logged in. If I go to back to where I was, and you see now there's a plus sign right here. That means add a new one. And I can add, and let's say this is an um, um, old computer price. Um, it's pretty expensive, so let's say. And description. Um, Selling my old computer, and let's save it. You see, it showed up here on the left side right away, and here's the display of the actual ad. And if I go back to where to my profile, it's now added to to my list of ads. And now, if I say if I log into another place right here, now and I decide to log in with Google, and here I am. I can also, and here's my ad again, I can also pick another color for background color, color, let's say pink. And what you see now is both clients are automatically updated with a recent update. I can, I can pick a color here, I can pick a color here. They're all pushed to, to all subscribers. And let's say I want to add something to something new again. Uh, I type uh, I type uh, new computer, and let's say I go back here and I and I want to search for computer computer, and I want to save this query right now. Save. It's now in my list of queries. Computer. And the new computer is even more expensive. So I, I'm selling my new computer, and it showed up here. Again. So, how is this done? Bullet is built using uh, Dart, which is Google's new language. Uh, Dart actually has classes, unlike JavaScript, and it allows methods and variables to be anna optionally annotated with type information if I want to. Uh, and the fact that I'm using Dart in both my client and my server allows me to share some code along uh, between them. Uh, Bullet also makes heavy use of um, functional programming patterns. In fact, there is not a single for loop in my entire app. Uh, all iter iterable structures are mapped, filtered, and folded pr to produce my desired results. And this also applies to, um, to, uh, to um, streams. Streams um, is a way to asynchronously define a, an event, a stream of events. Since Bullet is completely asynchronous, constructed using promises uh, and streams, this, this is very good because streams can be subscribed to like events, but they, can also, they, they may also be paused, resumed, and canceled by the, the, listening, by the listener. And, you, and using streams in this manner to have uh, the, my app um, erect, my update reactively to changes, it also goes under the name of FRP, or Functional Reactive Programming. In order to have my queries update live, uh, my, my queries return a stream of results instead of, of a list of results once it's done. Um, this, is, this prevents me from having to wait until all, re all results are done. And it also, pre also prevents uh, blocking because I can just subscribe to my up 
to my received events and they will appear as they are fetched. This also goes down to the database driver itself that I also, uh, only care it only fetches additional rows if if the stream is uh, is active. If it's paused, it doesn't fetch anymore, and if it's resumed, it it does the query again and fetches um, and fetches everything that was created after the recent uh, time it was paused. Uh, my queries my queries um, may also be uh, be live, which means um, they, the stream the stream of results will return open, matching any additional results that occur that occur after the actual database query was conducted. This allows me to to uh, to have a subscription like API where I I subscribe I I enter a query and I ent make it live and and uh, everything that is added that fits that query will be pushed on will be pu pushed to all listeners for that query. And um, in fact, I actually do the, the database querying from within the client itself. I proxy and multiplex this two-way async behavior of streams through a single WebSocket, allowing Bullet to call methods that return streams as if they were local to the client. On the client, I also use these um, raw query streams to create reactive entities that rep represents rows or documents in a database collection or table. Each entity actually represents a row or doc. Uh, I, I, each, each, each entity then subscribes to a stream of for updates for itself. Stream of updates. I also use an entity mapper class that represents the database collection itself that is used as a factory to produce cached entity objects to prevent it from, from um, subscribing to the same object multiple times. Uh, to allow this, I've created a simple permission model on the server that allows me to assign different permissions levels for different actions on a database collection. For instance, uh, one table may allow everyone to read, no one to delete, and all the authenticated users to update or insert. I have to do this because I allow raw querying ability from the server. Um, for authentication, I use uh, uh, Facebook and Google Plus, like right here. I have wrapped their respective JavaScript SDKs into Dart classes that inherit from a common interface. The SDKs then handle the actual login prompts and fetching of access tokens. And all I have to care about is uh, to is for them to log in and fetch the token. Uh, when a user is authenticated on the client, each database request will send that database token along on each request. Uh, on the server, I then check with Google's or Facebook's API to make sure the access token being sent with the request is actually a valid one and not a fake one. Um, to put the client together, I have used Angular Dart, which is an official re reimagination of Angular JS in the Dart language, made uh, by the original users, uh, creators. Um, it allows for the same two-way binding syntax that its JavaScript counterpart uh, has, but it, sets, but it sets itself apart in that it uses actual classes to implement directives, controllers, and components. Uh, it also uses a, uses a type-based dependency injection system instead of a stream-based one, allowing me to inject implementations of different interfaces. To define a dependency, each class simply lists them in, their, in its constructor. So right now I'm going to show a little bit of the code. Uh, right. I'm going to start by showing you the client. This is my main, my main app module. This basically imports my different, uh, my different modules from different places, my components, decorators, formatters, views, and so on, and simply installs them into a common module. I also, I also bind some, some um, interfaces to specific implementations. For instance, I, I bind uh, a connector client 
a connector is my class that that um, allows me to have streams over a over a remote over a web socket. And in fact, it's a it's an abstract abstract class, so it can it could theoretically be implemented by something else than a web socket. For instance, uh, uh, slow uh, long polling HTTP requests. But for this project, I've used web sockets. My database is also a is also a a abstract interface. Right now, it's implemented using a using a an object that simply proxies my methods to, through the connector to a database on the other side, on the server. To show you what my database looks like, my database interface simply has the, the normal current operations, find, insert, update, and delete, except that find, instead of returning a list of results, or a list of, it returns a stream of results. A stream is what I said before, it's an asynchronous uh, set of, of um, events or, or objects. And this allows me to subscribe to, to my, and, list, and handle each and every single object it receives. And uh, my other methods, they return futures, which is um, a darts a name for promises, which basically is, a, is an object that represents a, a future state of something. So, so this allows me to, to query without blocking. A future, on a future you can assign, a, you can create a chain of actions basically to, do, to define an asynchronous set of events to happen. Uh, and let's see um, uh, my connector. Let's go. Basically, my connector is it, it uh, consists of two parts: a connector client and a connect connector server. A connector client has a single method called subscribe, which returns a stream, and you send in a, a, an identifier, which is, which is a string, and a list of arguments and a and a, a map of key value key val value arguments key value argument, argument set. And um, my connector server simply, you can bind different identifiers to different handler functions and you can unbind identifiers. And uh, let's see, my, in the Angular Dart, components are actually what in Angular JS is a, is a, a, a directive that uses a template. It's a it 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 has it it's a template with some CSS and some and some behavior through this controller right here that I can define as a single custom component custom element. Basically, here I define a custom element called add, which I have a template for and a, a CSS for, and then I define some behavior in this custom element. In fact, all all my my even my views. Are custom elements defined as components. My profile, my profile view, is is a component is a is an element called profile view, which basically has some methods and behaviors, and does what it does. And here's the here's the template for this. For this, I can you see I can use my my normal ng repeat Angular JS syntax. As you expect, I've also uh, implemented a directive called push href on the a, a element that instead of reloading the page, it actually it actually just sends a message to my router to navigate to this place because I'm using HTML5 push state technology. This also allows me to open to to um, Control click or command click on a link and open it in a new window, and it re and it uh, opens as you expect. Since my views are components in my router, I simply just have to, I can simply define my views my actual view templates in line, 
So in, for instance, my, my search view is basically just this, this piece of HTML right here, search view, this, this tag. And uh, our, yeah, my authenticators, they all inherit from this client authenticator after class. And I've implemented um, a Facebook version and a Google version. And uh, I think that's pretty much what I have to show you right now. Uh, thank you for listening and uh, have a great day. Bye.